All right, well, <clears throat> this light is giving me Give me something. All right. <clears throat> How now, brown cow? We got two fancy cameras going. We got the tail of a bucktail changer. I think I'm going to do something a little different today. Possibly the same. as a recently released publication, production, which is to more or less rip through the fly, maybe edit in some sort of wild high speed. And in the event that I don't get the one I did a few days ago out, Shouts out to Anthony. My boy. Musky fishing, he was like, you know what would be cool? I thought about this and, you know, pretty not obvious if you haven't watched it, but um, Marlene Bates. I feel like I've watched enough of his stuff to know his first name, but... Brett? Brett Marlin? <laughs> Doesn't sound right. Yeah, damn, I have no idea. But, you know, tying the fly and then going and fishing. Which is... Tying a bucktail changer and then going to fish it for musky. So, a little bit of a different premise in that uh, I think it'll be very, how does it cast, how does it swim focused, whether or not it catches a muskie. They will be the judge of that. So, tail was, tail is... American rooster saddle, just the tips, and then I guess I'm doing kind of a support slash filler of shadback from Nightmare Musky Flies. So I think 15, or maybe the one half of a 40 millimeter with the, the straight part bent down to hang into the vise while I tie the tail. And then this uh, veil or, yeah, filler. Not very dense. Can it be? So, it, you know, it'll stand up, and when you're doing this over four, five, six, seven segments, it ends up contributing to a lot of the bucktail just keeps standing up on more stuff right where it's supposed to be. And I'm not really sure where, like I can I can see, generally speaking, from where folks are watching, like, I was about to say some like, so I was about to be like, oh, Israel, or, but you know. Anyways, um, yeah, I can see if people are tuning in from... Why am I going China? 
I can see if people are tuning in from Canada, Mexico, United States. I'm pretty sure within the United States I can see like which, what, what percentage. Where has all my 200 gone? That's a, I think Dixie Chicks, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, cover, a remix with GSP, Snapping 100 Strand. It's coming, it's in the mail. Where, has anyone seen my IRS Form 637? Hey, Gamagatsu. Reply to my emails. I kind of just gave up. And to be honest with the IRS, Form 637, haven't checked in again. So, any complaints from me are, are really just, they're just that. They're just complaints. They're not like, I don't know, reasonable. Damn, alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little faster so I can go fish. It is four thirty in the morning. I got sweatpants on. So in both the spirit of faster tying and honestly bucktail changers I'm not going to be super picky not picky in the sense of picked out I'm not going to be super picky about lengths I'm going to get this on brush it see where we're at throw some bucktail on cut going on here. Just a tiny little one, but it sucks. Man, dude, there, I don't know what was in the water or like something. I should have a little more coffee. I still got that the voice. Uh, this last week, but man, there are some unstable individuals out there. Oh yeah, back to the last tangent. And unstable individuals. I can see from where folks are watching. did get another light. Can you tell? The fuck was I saying? Oh yeah. I can tell from where folks are tuning in. I think state by state. I know on my website I can see like regions. But, uh, oh, and then like phone versus computer. What would be very interesting to see is like where in the household, you know? <clears throat> or what time, because you get, okay, this is the, some really, it's going to be fucking dope. But red tipped black bucktail. some shorter ones. It's like, are you watching from your bed? Are you in your basement? Are you 
upstairs down the hallway. In the bathroom that's farther away from people so that you can really let loose and also you know maybe if you're that far away they don't really notice that you're gone for 45 minutes just interesting to think about what type of individual is doing that versus I used to I used to watch tying videos in my basement while tying, and a lot of the times, I know I've said this before, but um, kind of just watching for like inspiration. I'm gonna go somewhat light. It is, it's a lot of front facing light. Right, we're just gonna. We're going to call that good. And I'm going to wrap forward on these, kind of leave it a little sloppy. Encourage. middle finger whip finish since that index finger feels pretty fucked. Little whip, stand all those up and pop, 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 goose. That is a size Riot, I believe. Gamma, get him. B10S. Donde esta la biblioteca? My neck is sore, mostly from stress, which is uh, pretty fucking stupid. Adonde? All the cowboys gone. UV torch, UV torch. UV torch. I did just check right in front of me. Hmm. I kind of feel like it's in the kitchen. Hold, oh, please. It was in the kitchen. That's not true, actually. God damn, dude. My brain is completely normal, and I am enough the way I am. This is my backpack. Close to the kitchen. Dangerous out there. A lot of bucktail going on. We're just jumping in. Sona Beach. That's a size, <clears throat> the size one. Going for the stickiness. 
small hook diameter versus the oh that's a dang old that's a dang old 80 inch that's a life-size musky changer with six six odds I did that without any hesitation I will admit that just going as big as possible biggest hooks 10 odds eight odds and you start fishing for musky more then you start I think the the big impetus for change is, is guiding it's like it man you want that thing to stick or just crack the hook points off you know make it about sport I just like getting to eat who really even likes boating well who even likes getting musky in the net it's like, sheesh, act like you've been there before, Matt. If you aren't aware, Matt Riley, up in southwest Virginia, not too far away from me. Great, great musky guy, tire, angler, buddy of mine. Kid's like 27, and just... Just killing it. It's good to see. I know how hard he works. He's my competition. Don't even fucking think about going to see him. Now you should get a trip with him. And I am not following a recipe, generally speaking. That said, if you haven't tied Game Changers and you are starting to tie them, I would suggest I'd make a case for the book Game Changer by Blaine Chocolate. Uh, I honestly, I tied Changers and I was like, meh. Is the juice is the juice worth the squeeze? And just thinking of the <laughs> so one it is, but that burp made me think of something really funny. Isn't that a good story? Yeah, I, just, I started tying them. And I was like, man, I was just moving here. Trying to get trout going on. I, I was working on the swim bug, pounding giant fish constantly all day and night. And yeah, just like a little too long to tie, not that great to cast. Like, yeah, it's, sounds like a tires problem, not a design problem. So, reading that book is pretty. Just listening to some of what he says. You know, how he's writing these little things. And, um, you know, he's pretty close to me. And now, being, e even in my first year here, like meeting people that, that knew him and just everyone spoke very highly of him. And, um, so there's got to be something to it, right? And so reading the book, this is now four or five years ago, it, it, the way he talked about stuff and the number of different platforms, I was like, all right, this is, let's give this, let's be a good, I was never a good student. I would, I'd figure it out on my own, you know, I would, I would fail on the homework completion or like the the pop quizzes got in college. There was a there was a math course. It's K 
calc. I was taking physics and um, a couple different physics courses that required knowledge and actually utilizing math that was way more complex than the math class I was taking, but I had to take the math class in order to just check the box, get credits for, you have to get Calc 1 or whatever um, for the, the physics major just within that College of Arts and Sciences thing. It was so brutal. Every single day there was a pop quiz. So, not necessarily a pop quiz, but it was more or less a. <laughs> you got like 50s, dude. The, what a psychopath professor. Every day, it's like an attendance policy, more or less, checking who is there, but in a, a massively curved, horribly difficult quiz that was more or less just an example from the textbook and then like totally changed based on the homework that was supposed to have been done or that you did so didn't do any homework didn't do the pop quizzes I think I ended up with like a C and took the course at University of Cincinnati when I was home that summer so kind of like halfway up there and got like a 90, that was like the best I've ever done. So yeah, I was like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get a good attendance grade. I'm going to read the Game Changer book. I'm going to follow instructions and see what's what. Worth the read um, for that. That's not vice problems. That's this shank that I've kind of repurposed as a changer shank. Be a good student. Show up. Follow directions. And after doing that, I started really, I mean, feather changers are a lot of fun to tie. Craft fur changers, I felt like it was just, a, I started seeing promise very quickly in the, um, the action from a, a fishing in the water perspective, but holy shit, were they a nightmare to cast. And so it became this, a couple years ago now, this, this challenge to get something that was, um, had everything I wanted and, and I could tie in, you know, 45 minutes. And it was, and looked great and caught fish and, and a lot of that, like for the, the crafty changers, I, I want stuff with different, I want to see different stuff on the, the trout streams at different times, different depths, different runs. I want to be able to, you know, sneak stuff in so it needs to be a little smaller, a little less floppy. And then, um, you know, some bigger profiles that can kind of get away with, uh, I'm okay with that. Get away with a little more material than the bucktail changers. And I think one of the most dangerous things you can do with bucktail is use too much, and it's not just with beasts. And then an additional layer of using too much would be when you employ body tubing. It's really effective.
So you end up getting something that, but bucktail is, it's a very cool material and generally speaking, it can be easy to tie with and get a product that is serviceable, especially with smaller stuff. When you go big, it has to breathe. It has to breathe on itself. So when you, it, there's an inflection point where, trigger warning for that word, where if you have too much of it, it actually doesn't expand and breathe the way that it should. So you start to, after you get to a certain too much bucktail amount, your, your increase in bulk relative to number of fibers starts to dwindle. I'm guessing there's a some sort of you're, you're still getting bigger but there's there's a point where you, you might even be causing it to not necessarily shrink but say you have 10 fibers and that's the inflection point you put on that 11th and the 10 fibers in the water look like this and you put on the 11th and it looks like this so that's those aren't real numbers. Well, those are both real numbers, but you get what I'm saying. We're going to do it. Yeah, and as far as what was... in the water this week... I, I mean, it's between people fucking... commenting and sending me DMs. It's a, it's a weird thing to... It makes sense, but it, it's a weird thing that I'll just run into someone and they'll have watched I hesitate to say, oh, they know me because I sound like a douche. But it's weird for me. Um, I, I, I spend a lot of time on my own. And especially as I started this ordeal, it was just painfully alone. But yeah, I mean, most of those interactions are, are very positive and if you ever see me out there on any of these rivers, holler at your boy. I've, I've recently got some uh, <clears throat> people have been uh, not super kind. Other guides. And Feel like I also mentioned this. I, I I just end up bitching the whole time. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm that's like the best mood you'll ever find me in. It is when I'm on the river. So do not hesitate to say what's up. The only reason I want a new vice is because
because there's just shit going wrong. I have I've done done a lot with this thing. And I don't know. I should probably just get new jaws. So we want to go a little bit longer than those. A little bit longer, not too much longer. And I am really going to go sparse. Because I'm going to have three ties here. And I'll throw in, that's way too sparse. And I'll throw in some of that shit back. I do have some clients that, like, by the end of the day, they're just talking like this. They're saying, Phew. About to give me one of them turtles hanging off that log. Dude, you, you're, you're gone. But, I, you know, also, I encourage it, so. <laughs> Say, you... You better tell you, you better tell you and me what. I think it's just, I, I am so out of my mind that it becomes contagious. So, I don't know, there, there's a little guilt in that. Someone's fishing really hard and just like kind of getting in the zone and they have this animal behind them going, damn, boy. Talking like I'm a 50-year-old farmer from Alabama. Whew. I'm from Ohio. We're just gonna keep ripping. I said, God damn. Oh no, that felt a little. That felt a little Bernie Mac, I'm not gonna lie. listening to I forget which podcast but one of one of the comedy podcasts that are popular and they were referring to some Norm MacDonald Norm MacDonald isms and god that dude is fucking hysterical I think what cracked me up the most was when he had, he got in trouble. I, I think, yeah, he got kicked off of SNL. So th this could have been on a Matt and Shane's secret podcast. He got kicked off of SNL because of some O.J. Simpson jokes. And then I don't know, however long goes by, and he he is hosting, and he opens with, and you, there's probably not many people that are actually aware of it, so like the joke is almost exclusively for him, and you know the dig at SNL, he just goes on a. A multi-minute O.J. Simpson joke 
<laughs> like relentless. And then I, you know, of course, I started going down the Norm Macdonald YouTube rabbit hole, and there is one. It's, it's some sort of award show where he has a Native American dressed in like I would, well, I don't know, ceremonial. I was going to say racist, but maybe that's racist. Uh, ceremonial, you know, the feather, the whole, everything. And <laughs> he's, he, Norm is going up to he was accepting an award on behalf of Melissa McCarthy. And he, he went up with this guy. Yeah, and then, uh, and then Norm just goes, now give it up. And then walks off the stage. That was his acceptance speech for another person who's having... <laughs> Unbelievable. And you see in the the audience that you know people are there's a variety of feelings, reactions around. But like they, they showed John Stewart, a couple other folks that like comedians and they're dying. I mean, because it just couldn't be <laughs> couldn't be funnier. All right, so we're gonna keep going. A scotch longer, and not from not like the tips going back over, like measuring what you just tied in, and going about the same or a little longer. I do tend to. overdress on length and it, it just becomes a little mm, they just get a little too big like for a, a 10 to to 11 inch fly it's you can get up to something that's like this pretty quickly and it's fine it's just um, you, you gotta compensate with weight or, or really significantly heavy fast sinky line I don't like to compensate with weight or super heavy line. Sometimes you have to. Getting down in them holes. Getting down in them holes all nice and deep like. But just casting 700 grain line without a giant fly on it kind of sucks. So yeah, it, it carries that thing. But you still got to get that line moving through the air and picking it up that really becomes the the part that makes it ugh. which yeah it's musky fishing but if you can get away with going 480 500 550 and just downsizing that fly a little bit Keep buoyancy all the same, you just have less mass that will be pulled down by less grain weight, the same that more mass would be pulled down by more grain weight of the same sink rate. 
that reduction in mass of the total system, both line and fly, becomes very noticeable. So if you haven't tied with body tubing, you know, just do this. No. Read a book. Read Blaine's book. But putting these little bumps in front, which is not super easy to do with 100 strand. Keep that 140 on deck. And that way your tie kind of gets sucked down into this little ravine between the body tubing and your thread bump. And if you want to make it really a hard bump, a little super glue on top of that and some crossing wraps with your GSP and you'll be right as rain. Does anyone know where that came from? Leave a note in the comments. Ribbon. Probably going to do another one here. Maybe not. And yeah, then once it's in the ravine, you can you can really go go hard on that on the mashing. Ah, you hear East Tennessee waking up out there. The little transitions where I'm restarting the cameras a little less painful, but not but just that that's it. That's the end of that. My trailer winch for my boat always ends up a little not a little. It always ends up backwards. I thought, man, just statistically. So I'm clearly doing something. And this this one's going to be pretty groundbreaking. I decided I'm going to think about it next time and see what happens. And it went on the right way. I thought, What I probably thought was, ah, that makes sense. And then I just, I never did it again because it doesn't really matter.
Some of those flash fibers are going to be a little long, but I will trim it. And yeah, with the Crafty Changers, um, some of it was hardware, so getting the the hook selection that I wanted that, that would encourage easy hookups, which, man, I got something to say about that. Shocking. I feel like there have been multiple instances where I have absolutely pounded a strip set into a fish that fully ate that fly all the way in its mouth sideways because brown trout eat flies from the side in the middle and then one shake it's out and even with smaller hooks so I started going single hooks on those and then I got one that Right at the side of the boat. Like a foot of line out. No stretch in the line. Smash this fish. And uh, immediately off. Floated downstream for about, I don't know. Not long. Check the hook points. We have fucking fishing with the end of a 2 by 4 So generally where I get in trouble, or where I have historically, is on this, you know, second, third, fourth section where I, I just, I start going too heavy and I'm, I'm not considering the implications of the body tubing for the next couple layers, and I'm thinking about this segment in isolation. So that has taken some time. I think what we're going to do, where are we going to be at here? I'll be about nine. Alright, we're going to do another 40. No, we're going to do hook. Then another 40. So 40 pound bite wire here and then I'm going to put in a couple pieces of 25 for reinforcement. And on the 25 I'll get both sides. the eye. Now a, a cool part of body tubing is that when you put it at the junction of articulation, especially with the big hook gaps, it does a good job of my hands are just, it does a good job of creating like an anti-fouling foul blocker.
about two and three quarters the length of the shank, less one tenth of the bend. divided by hook eye over four. So I do want all those pretty pretty much on the same plane against that hook eye. So I'm pulling very taut after some loose wraps in there. And that way you're not going to have pressure either on the swim or the set into a log um, on one piece of wire there, therefore, thereby creating a focus point that can snap it and then it'll instead be spread over three. I hear that hundred strand starting to go. because it's split. See, when things aren't going right, it's probably your fault. Maybe I'm just special. I know I am. I'm only be doing two up there. Oh, inch and a half on the money. That order of operations is important. When you're trying to push it back and then pull it back over, getting that out in front of the hook eye, light singe, and then that little bit of super glue, or that lot of bit of super glue right beforehand, just to make sure everything stays nice and cozy. I'll mix in a couple longer fibers. That that's about the same length and, and again I'm probably overcorrecting slightly, but I have more than enough very, very not bulky in the bad way, but 
large profile changers that like to like to have some smaller profiles in the mix. It just felt like too much, so. Mashing. Don't need to go crazy now, okay? Not necessary, but maybe, maybe it is for me. I don't know, that could have been the difference. We'll see. What if it was the wrong difference, though? if I screwed it all up. We will know for sure. We'll definitively know if that alteration right there to the body tubing before folding it back, if that was the difference between catching a muskie and not catching a muskie. I had a guy fishing conventional for trout, saltwater dude, never fished trout before, fishing tailwater trout in gin clear water on a tailwater, so dam controlled, without generation, so it's very, very skinny, it's about 30 minutes in he goes, I, I mean I, he's behind me like, I don't know if I can sense body language, but you can tell. It's just like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> it's going to be a long day. He ended up. He ended up getting it done. We did a half day. Uh, it was him and his father-in-law. And then the second half of the day, I fished his wife and the daughter of that father, while the son I, I don't know actually how it worked, but they were cool as shit, and they all pounded fish. Yeah, you take saltwater anglers and put them on a drift boat for trout, it is a hoot. 
Because they're just, it, it's the same deal with like when I, when I teach people how to fish streamers and they're conventional, or they have historically been conventional fishermen. So I, I refer to it as the PTSD, which is, I should probably find something different, but um, you, you get hit. It happens to me when I'm watching people fish where there's just certain presentations, the way things land, the clarity of the water, how flies are looking, the light, the all that stuff that just makes makes me go, oh fuck, dude, that is gonna get ruined. <clears throat> And guys fishing Rapalas for bass have seen something near a likely spot with, you know, presentations X, Y, and Z at distance A, B, and C get fucking wrecked thousands of times. And so you kind of have like this, this Rolodex of what's good and what's not good built in. So they know where to put it, and they, ex they anticipate the eat. They're great at, even without instruction, um, you know, getting those big kills on streamers so that there's, give them an opportunity to eat. Tracking well. Couple extra fibers in there that are a little longer. Totally cool with that. This is going to be fucking sick. And we are going pretty heavy on this one. I am aware that the camera angles are, are probably leaving something to be desired, but that's the long con, you know, when I start, when that shit starts getting locked in, everyone's going to be like, That, was, that one was definitely a burning bag. Yeah, this last one I filmed at least was pink and black 
articulated Buford thing and you know done done after fishing with Anthony and Morgan and I mean it, it just kind of dawned on me that like I don't know what type of engaging content I can develop while fishing for musky with a fly rod. Uh, it's like unless I catch one, which at that point, if the goal is to catch a fish, it becomes counterintuitive because it's like, especially if the fly is not exactly what I wanted. It, it was a little, I've made some adjustments to it. Good, we got camera batteries running out. That shit won't, won't fit through the hook. We might be ending early today, folks. finish I think these are partridge Slightly longer, slightly thinner diameter. Slightly doesn't fucking matter anyways. I think we are going to do certainly one thing with body tubing, rattle, possibly a loop of sorts. finger on the one. Donde esta? Just a little 140 to hold things together for me since it's easier to wrap with and I'm closing in on running out of GSP. We got that. We got this. Now this is where it's kind of suboptimal, but that side it's okay we're gonna be fine
part of me is rushing because I, I want to go fish. I want to get there before dawn. But also, I think the other bucktail changer video also cameras dying, you know. Whole collection of things. Alexa, what time is sunrise? Sorry, I didn't get that. The internet isn't reachable. Yeah, we're going to do body tubing for that. Not a crazy tie in of bucktail. Flash in a loop bucktail. Maybe a little like a light, strong, fuzzy head. normally put these on the tails, but my brain wasn't on. So you can leave that little skirt attachment knob. Uh, if you are tying onto mono, I've definitely shown that before. And since this is going to be, that's going to be holding, I, I like to avoid, definitely like to avoid tying, um, tying rattles onto hook shanks. So a little less concerned with the shank head but since it is going to be fixed or since I'm affixing materials to it I don't want it moving so I was kind of wanting to wrap around that and I do this on drunks so that they don't break kind of spread that 
spread the tension of the thread out, spread the force of the hook, the metal against the rattle, spread that out too. And then it's also just foam and super glue is a bomb proof. And then, you know, more bomb proofing. And get some down here. Hit that again before I wrap. We're gonna do bucktail and flash in a dubbing loop. What a perfect <clears throat> amount of bucktail. I think I'm just using that hank, leaving these long ones. Do some not very precise rip stacking. Trim the long shit. Make sure I got that flash in there. Don't mind if I leave some butts, make sure that not really going for bulk on that, but um, it will ensure that I'm grabbing. Since I'm effectively tying in the fucking dark. This is a Not something I typically employ, but here we are.
here. I have a little thread dam, some epoxy. And we will see this fly in the face of a muskie here pretty soon. Thanks for tuning in. So the fly I tied sucked. Now that's not true. But the front shank of it did. And I have excuses, but the reason is that... It was I was going for sparse and I achieved it. Um, so I put in some bigger ties here. This is put in some more bucktail here, and then I actually peeled back one of the body tubings on the second to last and put in some more black bucktail and added more nightmare musky flies um, or his version of the the ripple ice and now we're gonna go Strong fuzz. And this is just a brush that's, eh, I would say, in, I would say, medium density. I like to do, use the, the large, what's it called? Uni. They're large dubbing brush wire. And you can get away with the medium. But if you use the large and you. You can look up Gunner's video on the chosen one. Um, it's probably worth me doing my own just because at this point, once you know, you follow someone else's stuff and and then start figuring stuff out and then after enough tweaks and your own stylistic stuff it's kind of a different thing so I'm, I rip stack pretty heavily and spray it with detangling spray and and trim it and um, so I'm pretty meticulous about the the prep of getting it into you know, before creating the brush itself. And once you get it into that, you get it in your dubbing brush loop, and you do it semi-sparse, but very, um, the density is uniform. As you wind up, as you drill, and it becomes tighter and then you know brushing throughout and picking stuff out and all that it actually stretches the wire and if you're using medium it'll snap but the more you do that so you're holding that drill and it's it's wanting to as you it wants to pull in like that if you keep holding it it compresses the fibers so you're able to transform your density from not crazy dense which is just it's easier to get it into the damn wire brush table whatever you whatever you have
if you can point out the the f like physical flaws and how that works, I am so open to hearing it. Because as I say it out loud, I'm like, do I know what the fuck I'm talking about or... Not really that question, it's more like how bad, how big is the gap between reality and my interpretation of reality? But who's to say? Whew. That's about to get, about to get weird on that one. Who's to say? I might, just because everyone else... <laughs> Just because everyone else thinks that my reality is not in line with their reality and every other person agrees on their reality, that doesn't make my reality any less real. I feel like you probably only need one or two people being like, hey, you know how this thing in your reality is your thing, but like, um, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And you can be like, all right, well, you can eat shit. And then another person says the exact same thing, you'd be like, uh, huh, that's interesting. And then you get person three. Maybe, maybe, uh, start putting a little weight on what other people think. Generally not a good thing, but... Every once in a while, you can still be selfish about it. It can benefit you. Dude, I am lip-smacky and breathy today, so... Thankfully, this is just... quick fix of this fly. Oh yeah. Huh. Kind of Christmassy. And if you're feeling like shit over the holidays, just remember, you can always drink enough and frequently enough to not feel. Or drugs, whatever your thing is. Alternatively, you can try to figure your own shit out and... Maybe don't blame other people. But I will tell you what. That's a tough one. You have to be willing to take many a bite of the old shit sandwich. But it's not that bad. tell you what I will blame others for specifically my daughter it's not her fault that she's surrounded by grimy little children who are obviously way 
less careful and less considerate than she is. No, I mean, it's winter. Every, again, for the parents, this makes sense. If you're before preschool, your first one's not in preschool yet. Yeah, everything you hear is true. Most of the cliches that that people hear, I'm just talking about my daughter again, not even here. I'll, I'll self-validate while showing you something. Most of the cliches that you hear are true about parenting. They grow up fast, just seemed like yesterday, etc., etc. Now the fun part is, if you take your head out of your ass, you can actually hang out with your kid and not be one of those people that say, yeah, you're going to miss this. You guys didn't miss anything. I'm still just still just talking about my own life experiences to a camera. I think the next step here is going to be figuring out how to do I need to do uh, some sort of white balance lock or something. Get you some. Oh, yeah. So I was less meticulous. Give you the real rotary function. Maybe I can speed it up and use it as a. Ow, ow. All right. When I'm done with this, I'm going to load it onto my computer and then go get a bunch more of those. Did just find two. I'm going to go do some stocking stuff or shopping. For my daughter and girlfriend. Girlfriend is not a fan of Christmas. Because of a bunch of very legitimate shit. So, I'm doing my best to make it suck a little less. I have my own hang-ups with Christmas. Mostly just blurred memories of all all parties involved being crazy intoxicated by the time it was 4 or 5 p.m. Which again, if you're if you have a job where you're making money, um, that can be something that is viewed as healthy. Not good for a kid though.
So I'm taking down the bottom of this. I just want a little less surface area on the bottom and the sides to promote reorientation up so it's upright um, and then on the sides just getting some of that that side to side wobble I'm not going to do eyes and here's why they're a pain in my ass now the my philosophy on what you know what the important components of a fly are thinking thinking processing recalculating that's the old that's how my brain goes when I start talking I feel like one of those old GPS systems or pieces of whatever recalculating recalculating I'm like can you just fucking just say it so my philosophy on fly on success of fly gets overridden or, or the the most important principle is are you able to cast that thing to where it needs to be effectively? Specifically for musky, are you able to do that effectively over the course of, let's say, 7 to 20 hours? That's kind of a, you know, if you're going out for between a one and two day stretch. And, and once you start getting into the crazy big, it's like, I, I fished with Chris Willen a couple years ago and just listening to little things he was saying, you, you pick up on the experience and, you know, it was not a, not a good day of musky fishing, but two years of guiding and four years of time later um, I can confirm that one does not have control over that sometimes but he had said something to the effect of like for big flies you know really big flies that's kinda you know you, you got some that you you keep in the chamber you got that 12 weight rigged up you've been seeing a fish it's a good time like everything makes sense to all right let's stop here and and work a couple through here and um, drop a fucking hammer in there that's barely castable but has the right stuff or what we think is the right stuff otherwise I want something that you feel comfortable throwing so what does that have to do with eyes well when you put eyes on this it reduces the the profile of the head as it's going through the air so it reduces air friction it also smooths out the sides which can promote more walk the dog but you really lose a lot in air resistance and air resistance is an important thing in casting it allows the fly to actually drag behind the leader so that you can sneak it into places and have a loop unfold otherwise you're just you're swinging something as opposed to having something unfold. So when you have something that has air resistance, more air resistance than the line, you get just a little bit of that loop forming. Let's see if we can do this. Preemptive refocus. On my lazy boy.
Bah. Bet. Much happier with this. Time to go fish it. Will a trout eat it?
Yeah, 513, 543, Well, have a good one, man. Motherfucker, dude.